Yeah, so as continuation to the part one, so this is the geometry what I have constructed. You can just see. So these are the baffles, and uh, here is the. Uh, I'll just hide this. Yeah, this is the impeller what I am trying to give as a source for the rotation, and you can see there is a bottom inlet from which the air is being injected. And there is a water that is already present in this tank and this uh, face I am trying to give as an outlet and on the rotation of this uh, impeller with respect to air that is been floating in with a specific diameter how that is uh, the diameter of the air will start agglomerating or uh, uh, collapsing or uh, breaking so all the diameter distribution that we'll be trying to use a uh, population balance method and we'll find how the distribution of the diameter will be happening and how it has been exactly distributed instead of uh, going with the discrete phase model so we are trying to use p population balance method okay so i've just renamed it one is the outlet and the other is the inlet the bottom point then i'll just go to the machine part and just close this I go to the, I have four cores. So I want four cores. Let's import the geometry. Well, attach the geometry to the video itself in the uh, status, so you can just download that and you can work on that. So once the geometry is being imported, well, just update without any local sizing. Here I will try to refine a bit uh, by giving settings. Maybe I will select it, it will be sufficient. Starting. It has only fluid regions without voids. I uh, will just turn uh, fluid fluid wall to internal. I want to apply the shade topology. Non conformal mesh, no, it's a conformal mesh. I just want between the MRF zone as well as the tank. So now apply shape topology. This is the surface mesh what is being generated. I'll just update the boundaries, update the regions. I don't want any boundary layers right now, but as it is a demonstration purpose. Now we'll go to here and we'll try to refine and this. Maybe I'll just keep at the same uh, maximum cell length. We'll take some time to mesh. Oh, the count has increased a lot. I think uh, we need to decrease the sizings. Maybe decrease this to maybe one two. Now we'll check the count. Yeah, the count is okay now. It is below 5 12,000. This it will be a coarse mesh, but you can refine the mesh uh, by decreasing the settings or sizings, and you can use. Okay, then I'll switch to solution mode. Oh, gravity 9.81 is the bottom direction. So we'll try to on the mixture model. On the mixture model, click apply, close, then select two materials. One is air and water liquid. You can just go to materials tab, create it. In the fluid, you'll be getting the water liquid. So, copy it, close. Then go to the mixture tab. In the phases, in the primary phase, it's water liquid. In secondary phase, it's air. In the phase interaction, 
I will give a surface tension 0 0.072 apply and go to population balance model in this the discrete model as I stated in the previous part one is the discrete model the part uh, and the ratio as exponent is 3 and I am including aggregation model with the Lew aggregation and break up as V model and breakage factor as 1 right now you can just click on print bins you can see what are all the bins present here or the bin width so 0 0.0012 to 0 0.0016 if you change this ratio exponent then the bin width will be changing accordingly the maximum diameter will be automatically changed okay you can just click here print bins apply close now if you go to the boundary conditions with inlet velocity and phase 2 so there is no phase 1 at the inlet it's, everything is phase 2 only with a velocity of 0 0.01 and the multi-phase and volume fraction as 1 so I, we need to mention the fraction of each bin so I am just mentioning the fraction of each bin what are the fractions though combined uh, the bin fraction should be equals to 1 okay because uh, the total entire population will be uh, accordingly distributed so the fraction should be sum of all these things and sum of all these fractions will be equals to 1 okay so then you can apply close and then go to cell zone conditions in the MRF zone select the MRF zone so this is the MRF zone you can just check here in the MRF zone you need to go to frame motion in the frame motion I am giving 300 as RPM with Z as an axis and apply close you can just refer what exactly the MRF zone is go to display and you can just click this and click on edges and display so so this is a display wall sorry here you can see the MRF zone yeah, this is the MRF uh, zone okay so this is the MRF zone what you can see No, it is not rotating. Okay. So in uh, again, you need to go to wall and the MRF. What you have seen, you need to go to that MRF one wall, and you need to give this relative to adjacent cell zone. Uh, the uh, uh, speed is zero, and there is a rotation of along the Z one direction. This gives helps in giving the to the MRF zone of three hundred RPM, which is in a steady state. Okay click apply so first one you need to give to the cell zone the MRF uh, RPM as well as you need to give to the walls of that uh, zone with the relative as 0 if you want to give as an absolute instead of relative if you want to give absolute then you need to mention 300 RPM both meant same okay apply close and now I'll just initialize click initialize and uh, now the entire zone is with phase 1 only so the phase 2 volume fraction is 0 means everything is with phase 1, phase one only ok now go to run calculation and run so definitely this cannot be studied because the uh, volume fraction of the A that is been entering in will be split into different other diameters so there is a breakage there will be aggregation all this will be activated so this is the minimum diameter and this is the maximum diameter through which uh, the air is entering at different fractions of those bins so each bin is having as I printed each bin is having this as the width so from 0 0.0001 to 0 0.0002 so each has different bin width and the diameter ranges are from this is the diameter range from 0 0.001 or 1e power minus uh, 4 to and this is 1e power minus 2 uh, sorry uh, it's 2e power minus 4 is 1e power minus 4 so these are different diameter and uh, th this have a width and with a fraction of as specified in the inlet section of the phase 2 right you can see now if you just go to uh, graphics and if you can just check the counters so if this is a bin zero fraction how it is being varied so you can see it's 0 0.532 someone think uh, one second hmm. 
Yeah, you can see uh, there is a so there is a fraction of bin uh, zero fraction here, which is 0.53 maximum is coming here. But what is the fraction we have given here? It's 0.2. Even though we have given 0.2, but we are getting, getting a 0.5 fraction due to breakage aggregation. So there is a transfer from one bin width to other bin. So there is a change of the diameter that is present in the bin. Uh, so, uh, sorry, change of the fraction of the bin zero. It means so many diameters that are higher than the bin zero diameter is splitting and coming and aggregating here. So the bin zero fraction is being increased by 0.2 to 0.53. So, of course, the range of the bin will not change. It is 0, 1 e power minus 4, 2 e power minus 4. That width or the fraction of the diameters will not change. That is fixed. But the fraction, the amount of number of diameters that are present in that are be changing. Right? So, now if you go to bin 1 also, similarly, you can just verify. So, the fractions are changing. Now, if you vary this, instead of, uh, if you remove the aggregation kernel, for example, now what happens? You can just verify. I'll just apply and run the simulation for another 70 to 80 iterations. You can see that the aggregation is removed. So now the diameters that are present in each bin will vary, right? I mean, not the diameter value, the number of diameters, the fraction of the number of the diameter will increase. So for example, there are five particles which are present with 1 e power minus 3 to 1 e power minus 4. Now there will be 10 particles. So the particles count is increased. That means the fraction of the number of the particles present will be increased or the diameter range will not change. Okay. So that is the intuition or that is a, a concept behind these things. You can just see. Again, you, you, you will see that uh, the fraction is been not but things will be definitely have a variation. Of course. Can just see so now the bin one fraction is completely changed because there is no aggregation we have removed the aggregation now instead of going with this uh discrete for our uh, model we can go with the homogeneous discrete phase model then you can give two to three phases with each phase having different bins the concept i've already explained in the part one you can just verify the part one so the concept uh, is the same but now we can have it different velocities for each phase inside a cell but that is not happening with the homogeneous model or discrete model, plain discrete model. Now we have a standard moment model. The standard moment model also we can give uh, aggregation kernel but no breakup kernel. So that is a limitation for the standard moment model. In the standard moment model we can uh, specify the maximum and minimum. So if you can go with the, this I will give as a maximum. Then we can just verify how exactly it is being varied. I will uh, keep the thing as same. I mean uh, the maximum size uh, as of uh, uh, discrete model. Now I increase the moments for 5. So which helps in calculating the mean, median, variation or of all the distribution of the particles. Right. I will just use this aggregation kernel instead of uh, we need to give a specific rate. But I don't uh, have a specific rate right now. So maybe I will just take uh, some of this as aggregation kernel rate. So obviously it will not be same as such of uh, uh, discrete model. You can just check results for a discrete phase model and uh, we can also get for standard momentum or quadrature momentum or deep mm -hmm. so in the same way where exactly we need to follow the uh, rules what exactly I've stated in the part one of the video where standard momentum has a moment based in order to find the mean medium for the continuous uh, phase distribution but whereas in the quadrature moment we'll try to split that into bins and each bin will have a specific uh, distribution again depending on the uh, point phase and the weight as well as the polar distributions so that will uh, it, it's like uh, again going with the discrete phase within a continuous phase splitting into different bins right so quadrature moment uh, will be more uh, I mean, less time consuming compared to the discrete phase because we don't have to solve for each bin equations as a transport equation again so we will try to fit those equations to the or fit the values to the uh, point values what we exactly we will get for each bin right so now uh, if you go with the post processing part of this you can just maybe i'll just on get into the results and just i'll show you post processing part how exactly it is it varied
So in this way, we'll try to create the bin fractions, how uh, the percentage and how it can be distributed. And you can see this is one fraction automatically got created uh, by the previous one. Maybe you can just check this ISO surfaces what I've created with the value of 0 0.02. I'll remove these two. So now you can see here. So there is a fraction of ISO surface of 0 0.02 of phase two bin source zero or bin fraction zero. So this is the fraction zero which is present. Uh, bin zero fraction with a fraction of 0 0.02. When you try to create the ISO surface, it will be appearing in this way along the impeller because we are trying to impact from this inlet and this is the fraction what we will be, be uh, absorbing when you try to post process so this is a 0 0.1 fraction similarly instead of uh, point or bin 0 if you want to go with the bin 2 so this is the bin 2 fraction uh, for point 2 value how exactly it is being distributed you can just check right so these are the values with respect to the phase 2 velocity it has the color and the value is 0.2 for the fraction so hope uh, this made you clear how we need to have this uh, instead of discrete phase how can we go with the population balance method when you have a bubbles or any diameter distribution or any splashing or any particle distributions so this is a methodology you can go with uh, to solve along with the transport equations instead of going with the Lagrangian equation thank you